to mispronounce a lot of things in this video, so please be gentle. That is so fetch. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Kaya, and today we are deep diving into the band Rammstein. Rammstein? Rammstein feels more comfortable for me. I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna pronounce a lot of things wrong in this video. So, this is a German band. Uh, Google says it's New Deutschart. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Uh, but they're from Berlin. Formed in 1994. We got five songs today that we're doing. Um, from four different records, checking out their discography from 1997 to 2019. We have some recorded songs, some live uh, performances, and some music videos. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please feel free to do so. Well, come and join our metal journey. We have a ton of videos that are coming out this month. I post weekly videos. Uh, join our Discord. The Mosh Pit invite link is down below. It's a very fun, quirky environment um it's just one big family over there so if you want to join i post a lot of updates i get a lot of like feedback and i get questions and i ask a bunch of questions it's just a place where i really um connect more with y'all so if you want to have more of a voice and like i don't know just communicate with me more uh do it through the discord i know that this band is controversial um, I'm not really sure, uh, why or how, uh, so please enlighten me. This is the totally blind reaction, so without further ado, let's get into it. but the song is from 1997 either way I wanted to see what they looked like live their singer looks like a buff babe like he's thick thick and uh, one dude's on a treadmill so I know there's like this band's like controversial and they but they do like I don't know is it like they do like interesting kind of like weird out-of-the-box stuff on stage I'm assuming because this dude's on a treadmill and then based on like other reactors like thumbnails and stuff their music videos are like shocking <laughs> so I'm here for the ride um, already I kind of like that there's sort of this almost like progressive rock mixed with like kind of uh, techno club house music sort of just a little bit and I really love his interaction with the crowd too this looks like a fun <laughs> Oh! Du hast, du hast mich, du hast mich. 
lighting. I like that special effect of the lighting while he's playing. This dude's a boss, okay? He's just chilling on this treadmill and they smack this keyboard on his, like, what's supposed to be the control panel. Bubba! And I bet he is sweating up a storm because they got the flames. Like, oh my lord. treadmill i like their whole look it's very industrial i think that's what it their their vibe is it's industrial metal right um and yeah it's it's definitely whoa look at that album cover oh oh that looks like something from saw that is so disturbing uh Oh, Bubba. Okay. Um, yeah. I, it's kind of giving me, like, some Metallica vibes, just based on what I heard in the Metallica video, which if you haven't checked out, it'll be, oh God, it'll be here, um, which is a very fun video. So... Uh, it's kind of giving me that instrumentation wise. Honestly, there wasn't anything in Duhast that grabbed me, at least in this live version, that was like wicked, like intense. I mean, it was just, um, I don't know, it was very standard. Uh, I really liked the keyboard solo. What really got me with this live version was the crowd interaction and the singer. Like him just like instructing the crowd and, um, and the callbacks. The, cr the chorus really calls for like a lot of crowd interaction, which I think is like the best part of that song. Um, this says the English version of Duhast is not intended as a translation of the original German version of the track. Found only on special edition. I lost where I was. Special edition copies of the band's second album. Okay, so this, we're starting with the second album, Sounds Shooped. The track changes the lyrics significantly. Rather than do hast or you have, the English version is you hate, which plays on the German term du hast. 
which is also you hate. The German terms are homophones, meaning that the song's meaning changes enormously between the English version and the original German version. Oh. German and English. I just wanted to see if there was like a direct translation because I know this is like our our very first metal band where they're like I think entirely all of their discographies in German. Uh, <laughs> don't make fun of me. Okay. Um, great. Motor music. I just want to see, do they have anything? If it's not a direct translation, what does this say? Will you until death does sever? Be upright to her forever. This song's English version isn't the same as a German one, as a German one has German wordplay that is incompatible with English wordplay. This is so interesting. But basically this line is a play on the German wedding vows. But the main point is still here. Till, Till asks himself if he could live his whole life without her. Or with her. Let's see if there's anything on the German version. Just for funsies. Du hast. Don't give me that English version. I want to see what this one is. Okay, that's definitely more like 90s. This song... Oh, please tell me it's not all in German. Okay. This song is a play on German wedding vows. I don't even know what that says. Do you want to love and respect each other and to remain faithful until death separates you? The music video bears resemblance to the movie Reservoir Dogs. That's a great movie. Directed by Quentin Tarantino. Lindman acknowledges this and stated that the six members of Romstein are big fans. Kurt, the Duhast video seems very similar to Reservoir Dogs. Um, was that an influence to the video or just coincidental? All six of us are fans of Tarantino. We wanted to follow up on that with our second video. Now we are really big Tarantino fans. Has he made his 10th video yet? His 10th movie? Do you guys know? Also, are you a fan of Quentin Tarantino? Side note. Okay. Next up. So now the next song we are going to listen to is from 2001, their record Mutter. Um, and the song is Mine, Hers, Brent. gear vibes I'm sorry okay um it's giving me like symphonic black metal strings strings I love the strings also this section is nice they have this like layered 
I'll have to listen to it some more, but it's like a layered guitar just kind of like here, giving a little bit of texture. Nice opener for this like second verse. Also, I really loved the production in this first half. His vocals are super clear right up front, so every time he's like making an accent, it's like, mm, it's, it's right there and it sounds really cool. Also, side note, this lead singer has a very cool look. Like, he could be an actor in some, like, I don't know, badass Viking thing or something. He just, he's got this, like, very kind of, like, evil villain kind of look. I don't know. It's very cool. <laughs> the moon and dice, the schwarze oh. Feen. Sie kriechen aus dem Keller Schach. in this it's creepy though I feel like there's stuff that it's going over my head because I don't understand the language but I feel like is there stuff in their music video that like people don't like I would assume also this is a very interesting album <laughs> like Daenerys Targaryen was. Oh, you remember that beautiful blonde silver haired goddess? I ain't gonna spoil her ending, but bestie, we were not satisfied. Wow, beautiful. 
beautiful piano, beautiful ending. Um, I'm a sucker for a good piano too. I don't know about you, but that mm, their production and mastering and everything is really, really nice. Um, obviously, Ramstein is a huge band with a lot of revenue coming to them, Bestie. So they can they can afford to have these big productions on stage and really nice, crisp sounding records. Um, I'm just gonna keep it real. I ain't hearing anything that's like wickedly groundbreaking, but that's okay. Um, because what I think they lack in sort of the technicality that we've had on this channel with certain deathcore bands and death metal bands and symphonic black metal bands and stuff like that. Um, you have to think Duhast is commercial, point blank, period. And if you don't think they're commercial, bestie, look at, look at, just look at how many albums they sell. Commercial. Um... It's not a bad thing, it just means that people really like their music, which also means that their record labels are going to want them to make music that is going to sell and be commercial. So it's going to have sort of like a typical layout, I would assume. So they're not doing anything that's like super groundbreaking, but um, they have these like nice little melodies that I do like, like that little piano um outro for Mine House Brent was really cool um and him like repeating it as well and then I also think what they like Romstein has a lot of shock value with what they deliver clearly um so they like to push boundaries and so what they lack in sort of the instrumental technicality they they bring in stuff that makes you shiver and quiver okay um, you know, my past friend, uh, we are looking for Ramstein. Is it Ramstein? Ramstein? How do you spell it? Mine Hurst. Mine Hurst? There we go. Oh, they have a Spanish version, huh? So track one on Mutter, so this opens the thing. Oh, look at that. See, that's like the same sort of woman that was like, or person, I guess I was featured in the music video. This hat is intense. She looks like one of those earwax candles. Um, mine her sprint, my heart burns. This is a song about how men are bound to hide their feelings since late childhood by picturing it like a child's nightmare that hardens one's heart. Released this video, at least two videos of mine her sprints for their video collection. Videos 1995, 11 years after the release of the single. Piano version and the original version. Oh, with the little boy, a little baby. Okay. So, about how men are bound to hide their feelings since late childhood. Very interesting uh, concept. Definitely, I think, a good concept to have because I also agree that men are kind of expected to, uh, you know, not cry, not show feelings, be just these hard and strong men when it's like it's okay to show weakness at times and it's okay to be emotional and um you know talk about mental health and stuff like that so I do think that that is a valid song <laughs> they come to you at night demons ghosts and black elves they crawl up from the cellar rows and will take a look under your blanket so I'm guessing the music video is kind of like this sort of nightmare thing what happened to my lyrics Got rid of one ad. His pent-up emotions come to him. Whoa! Look at that! What is that from? Uh-uh, bestie. I don't want that. 
His pent-up emotions come to him in the night and try to break him. They creep out of the cellar, as in the cellar of his mind where he puts all his sadness. The bed and pillow is a metaphor for him being a little child, defenseless and scared of those feelings coming to get him. Pre-refrain. Wow, these pictures they have. Little children, listen now. I am the voice from the pillow. I brought something to you, a bright light in the heaven's sky. My heart burns. The repetition could refer that this child is not alone. Every little man is bound to hide their emotions. Or it could mean a never-ending cycle. The child grows and becomes the sandman gives his heart and become heartless and feeding off others people's sadness and misery. Interesting. I feel like this chorus would be really catchy. After seeing like that live performance in Paris, like I feel like the crowd, yeah, they would leave that open to have the crowd sing along with them for sure. Okay. So the next song we have is called Mein Tell, Til Tell. Um, which I think literally means my dick, my part, my dick, something like that. I don't know, but we're going to listen to it. huge ooh live that would be nasty uh, I like this song a little bit better than the other two it's got a little bit more bounce a little more pizzazz I'm getting some like slipknot it's kind of what I'm hearing um, they kind of started around the same time as slipknot but there's obviously more industrial stuff that's sort of going on it's like Slipknot and Corn, and like later Sepul Sepultura, Sepultura, uh, pronunciation's not, it's my weakest, okay? But that's kind of what I'm getting with a little bit more like, like I said earlier, kind of house techno vibes, just like more synth, wavier synths, kind of clubhouse synths, but nicely layered, so it doesn't sound corny, in my opinion, it's just, it's a nice layering piece, which I really do. Perfect example of that, like, that synth and really catchy melodies so they give you this synth that's kind of giving you that little riff and it's filling up it's fat it's gargantuan and then it follows -da 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 -da. oh live Yeah, that last thing she made a 
Okay, that I think is like their their heaviest song that I, we've listened to all like so far out of the out of the three that we've listened to. That was definitely the heaviest one, for freaking sure. Uh, that was a trip. That was absolutely a trip. Um, very catchy. Uh, very very catchy. I think this is the right one, yeah. Um, super catchy and definitely, like, I was already singing along with the chorus. Um, really liked the mix between, like I said, the synth and, like, the sort of metal, industrial metal sound. Definitely giving me, like, uh, some corn, slip not older, sepultura vibes. Um... The song is about two German cannibals. Oh yeah, so this is off of their record Reese, uh, Reese, 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 Rise, Rise uh, from 2004. Um, it's about two German cannibals who met online. What a very specific thing for this song to be about on a website forum called The Cannibal Cafe. <coughs> All right. Um, Armin Maiwiz and Bern Jurgen, the two men in their 40s, met each other, cut off and cooked Brenda's penis, and together ate it. Wow. Wow. Afterwards, Maiwiz killed Brenda's with Brenda's permission and stored his remains and ate him almost entirely over the months before his arrest, ironically, after years in prison, Maiwiz became a vegetarian. What is this about? Is this a real thing? Also notable about the incident is that Maiwiz recorded the slaughter and preparation of Maiwiz after his, uh, after their candlelit meal, and it was found, what, huh, wait, and it has been found by police, however, has not been leaked onto the internet, although a few alleged screenshots have. It is so sick that it becomes fascinating and there just has to be a song about it. Mine's Hell has been dubbed, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that, in the media, the cannibal song. Wow. Whoa. Okay, so I'm, this video is age restricted. Okay. Good thing we didn't watch the music video because I, I have a feeling this video is going to get blocked anyway, so. <laughs> Reese, Reese. Dang, Bubba, you wrote this. Wait, this is a real thing? Why would you have a place? Oh my gosh. Camel Cafe. Oh my lord. Uh, this is a real thing? So we have to have that on the channel. I'm sure there's like a thousand videos on it, but like I'm more interested about the fact that it inspired this song. What's this bridge say? McDonald's, I don't care about your food, okay? Uh, he describes the meat as wonderfully seasoned and cooked and served on China with a good wine and romantic candles and then ironically adds that a little bit of culture is necessary. It's ironic since many see cannibalism as a depraved, savage, primitive act. That's what you're singing. Or it's an, okay, English, I, okay, I get it. It's English explanation of what they're singing about because it's not a direct translation. I understand. It's all coming together. Um, if it's not wickedly obvious that I'm very American and very uncultured to German culture in its entirety, then... I think you've been missing something. Oh, today I'm meeting a mister. That's what it says. I'm meeting a mister. Man, the lyrics sound so innocent when you're just speaking them in English. The song is about Armin Maiwiz. Okay, so he's a real person. In 2001, met a man who willingly had his douche noggin thing eaten. Y'all need to go to confessional or something. There's something wrong with you. 
Oh my lord. That's disgusting. But also very clever, like, way, like, something to write a song about. Um, because I know there's a lot of, like, serial killers that inspire metal songs. So, the next song is also off of this 2004 album, Reese Reese. I like the sound of Reese Reese. I hope that's what the pronunciation is. And this one is called Kind Lust. Oh, yeah. So, this... <laughs> I already know because I grabbed this footage before we started filming. Um, I know that they're in fat suits in this performance. This is from a 2005 performance of this song. talking about is they're ballsy why are they in fat suits like what's the point I don't know just to have fun but I love how when they're getting started guitarist is just like I <laughs> can just see all this fat just kind of like go with it oh man they all have the same pear-shaped body tap up here too
holding his chest. He's holding back that fat suit. He really wants to headbang, but he can't because it's just like stops here. <laughs> they have some meaty breakdowns, and this like chunky guitar is like it's nice. It's very catchy, um, and I think it's kind of kind of lost. How is it? What are they doing? What is he doing? about not wanting to do the same repetitive things over and over again. Another interesting concept. Ugh. Um, some have said it's a double-edged sword regarding the concept of actual lust, meaning the song is talking about not wanting to do a number of things, but in reality that specific phrasing is ironic. Members of the band have spoken about the song and referred to the lyrics quite literally. In the video of the making of Kind Lust, Kind of Lust, guitarist Richard uh, Crispay, Crispay, uh, discussed the meaning of the song and music video. You know, after all of these years, we're full up. Fame, success, money, we don't want to do anything anymore, nothing. That's the idea in the song. We were, we've returned to the starting point. Again, we just want to make music. We don't want all the circus that goes with it anymore, so we meet up again one more time for one more performance just to make music together. The fact that we are fat is just symbolic for ex excess. It's really just about returning to the beginning. Oh, that's cool. I like that. That's a cool concept. I definitely think that that's a cool concept. Um, try, but it's getting slower. We're exhausted. Oh man, that's why they were coming on the stage and like hugging each other and stuff because they were kind of like reuniting. Uh, what have the artists said about the song? It was my dream to make it our first single, but that unfortunately didn't happen. It just didn't make it. Romstein is back after a three year break, totally obese with the song Ik Bak Kein Lust. English and Dutch translations. Oh dang, you even put like a prosthetic face on. Alright. I keep having this dude, Jacob Hellner. It's like their band and then Jacob Hen Hellner. So he did all of Romstein. Doesn't look like he's really worked with anybody else. He's a Swedish music producer known for his work with Romstein Clawfinger. Emigrates and Apocalyptica. Okay, I've heard of Apocalyptica. What do you think of the other ones? Um, dude looks like he knows stuff. That's a thing. What does it say about? I don't feel like not hating myself. Don't feel like touching myself. I would feel like... Wow, we're already starting like that, are we? I feel like doing that, um, but I don't feel like trying it, I would feel like getting undressed, don't feel like seeing myself naked. What does this have to do with not wanting to do the same repetitive things over? Okay. 
Man. We just went to him from 0 to 60 real quick, didn't we? That's an unreviewed one. It's also got lots of... I don't feel like chewing something. I don't feel like... No, I don't want that one. I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it. Now I don't feel like it. So that's just like what they're repeating then? Alright. I don't want to leave the snow. In German, snow is slang for cocaine. And there are rumors about the members of Rammstein being cokeheads. So Till might sing about not wanting to stop doing cocaine. That's an unreviewed um, review. But I don't know. What do you think? What do you think about this song? Do you think it's weird? Do you like it? Um, what's your What's your take? Um, I definitely think Mindhurst Brent is my favorite. Okay. So now we're going into our very last song. This is a 10 minute song and it is from an untitled album from 2019. If it actually has a title, let me know. But as far as I'm concerned, it's untitled. Um, and I'm just going to call it Doucheland because that's about as good as what I can get. Doucheland. Um, and we have the music video. So we're going to watch that. And it's going to be great. So let's just bring that up. It could be like Douchland. Is it Douchland? I don't know. Douchland just sounds funny. And this also looks like a very well made music video. Three, two, one. for this I mean they put some money into this this is not a music video this is like a short film okay this is one of those situations uh, again a production mastering everything that is involved with this this song is amazing and beautifully mastered beautifully produced beautifully layered really really like it uh, and I feel like the live sound of this would slap your face off let's be real uh, I think this song is already my favorite <laughs> out of this. I really, really like the sound of this. 
hast viel geweint, im Geist getrennt, im Herz vereint. Wir sind schon sehr lang zusammen, dein Atem kalt, das Herz in Flammen. I really hope they're not. Ugh. Oh, it's making me all kinds of feel funky, girl. Uh uh. I don't do well with like zombie stuff. You kidding me, bubble? Okay. Uh, also, this music video is making me think of like Blade Runner. Um, the early 80s version, okay? Not 2049, alright? The first one. Uh, one of the best movies ever made. It's reminding me of Blade Runner. Also, like, the beginning really gave me some, like, the big, like, drums. Kind of reminded me of, again, Metallica and a little bit of, like, Megadeth. Just a little. Just a little. a movie. The part right before this bridge, it's like, it's, it's just the, the guitars. There's like a riff, -da 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 -da, something like that. It's very fast. I really, really like that. And I really like the like echoed layer vocals that follow in the bridge. Like, do has, do has, do has, do has. Really nice layering. <laughs> Überdrüssig, wer oh. steigt, der wird tief fallen. Oh. Deutschland, Deutschland, überall. Dein Herz in Flammen will dich lieben und verdammen. Mein Atem kalt, so jung und doch so alt. Deine Liebe. Fluch und Segen. Oh. Meine Liebe. 
course you have to have ending credits. The beautiful piano instrumental. sit through all these credits I'm just telling you but yeah so we just have the rest of the credits all right all right I still have no idea what we just witnessed but Dauschland Dausch Dausch how do you pronounce it Dauschland D-D-D-U-S-H D-D-E-U D-E-U Dausch Eight hundred and seventeen thousand people. Look at this goddess that you have on. Ah, oh, she looks fierce, dude. I was all in German. Uh, oh, lordy. So I guess it's self-titled. Oh man, Bubba, we really unlocked some here. I can't even read any of that. Oh, lordy. English translation, please. Uh, okay, great. Uh, Dauschland is a single by German band. Video is private. Seventh studio album. It was a. Uh, it was released on March twenty eighth, twenty nineteen, as a music video through YouTube. On March twenty seventh, twenty nineteen, the band uploaded a teaser of a new music video for the song to their official YouTube channel, but now it's private. This short video shows four members of Rammstein in guillotine loops. The name of the teaser contains the release date of the single written in Roman numerals. Yeah, I would assume that they would just private it after the, the video has been released. You can find the original lyrics of German annotation. So the Black Queen portrays a representation of Germany through various moments in its history, including Germanic tribes, Nazism era, the band is hanged, and its end, three Nazis shot in a circle. Another cryptic scene is where people eat on the representation of Germany, but in my opinion, it's literal. Germany had an economic success and its people ate slash benefits from it. Why is the queen black? She portrays Germania, who is usually presented as a white woman with red hair. The gold dress, the red lipstick, and the black skin color could represent the German flag. Also making her black is a controversial statement during a phase where Germany struggles with nationalism and immigration. Ooh, very interesting album cover too, with just like the one match. Dang. She was just making out with that head, too. It was fire. Excited for this album. Uh, yeah. Look at all these comments. That was impressive. The lyrics and video are provocative, as always. Guess a lot of folks are going to get butt hurt. <laughs> this sent me back to high school years. Epic. Okay, let's see what some of these lyrics say. So the chorus supposedly is Germany, my heart in flames, want to love and damn you. Germany, your breath's cold, so young and yet so old. Germany. Verse two, I, you have, you have, you have. That's what they're saying. I never want to leave you. You cry, you cry, 
one can love you, you love, you love, and want to, and want to hate you. You hate, you hate. Presumptuous, superior, take over, hand over, slash puke, surprise, invade, Germany, Germany. These four lines are a brilliant play of words in German. And look at all that. The first line refers to the presumptuous theory of the Nazis that the German master race would be superior over others. The second line, which has the first play on words here, refers to when the Nazis took over control of Germany on January 30th, 1933. <coughs> because most of the Nazi party's power came through elections, the Germans handed over the country. While watching the Nazis celebrate their victory by marching through the Brandenburg Gate, Max Leiberman uh, was reported to have commented, I cannot possibly eat as much as I would like to throw up slash puke. The third line is a clear reference to the invasion of Poland, which was a surprise um, Blitzkrieg style attack, which began September 1st, 1939. Man, we're really diving into some history here. The last line is a reference to a famous line from the Nazi national anthem, the douche, the doubt, sorry, the douche land lead has been the German national anthem since 1922, but the first two of three stanzas have been removed from the anthem since the fall of the Nazis. Interesting. The original line from the Deutschland da, da, lead is Germany, Germany overall. Remstein subtly tweaks the lyrics to Germany, Germany over everyone. The first three lines provide powerful context for the fourth. They underline Germany's history of its own perceived superiority and the actions that it led to. The play on words in German of continuously using the prefix Uber, best translated with above or better in this case, really drives this point home. The fourth line really drives the home the point and is sung with clear sarcasm. It's not Germany overall, since people from many different countries claim theirs is the best. It's Germany over everyone. Dang, Bubba. I feel like this is a sassy song. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like they're 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 sassy in this one. Like, I think it's both like we're proud to be from Germany, but we're also like shedding light on all of this like history from our country and we're kind of like sassy about it. I also know, I just remembered, I also know that I think one of their records is banned in their own home country, which is kind of like, that's so metal, <laughs> like to have your your own record be banned in your own country. So that's pretty intense. Um, final thoughts. I would say there's obviously a huge cultural gap that I'm missing. Um, I don't listen to a lot of like music that is not from the US and just now in this metal journey I'm now getting into you know Epica, Demu Borgir, Sepultura, we've done so many different bands from around the US and outside and we're going to continue to do so so we've hit a few bands um, that do some of their wording in um, their native language and then also um, English but uh, Ramstein, Rammstein they're the first fully German, like absolutely no English in their, their music. And I think that that's very cool and also very like, um, not overwhelming is not the right word. It's just, it's new, it's uncharted territory for me. So um, I apologize if, um, if it's going over my head, um, but you have must understand that this is my first experience with this kind of stuff. So I'm very intrigued. So that's going to do it for today's video. I really hope that y'all enjoyed. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. I really, really do appreciate it. If you want to subscribe to the channel, please feel free to do so. I post weekly videos, um, join our discord and send me things 
through the P.O. box if you want something to be featured in the metal unboxing. Y'all already know the deal, but if you don't, go and check out our first metal unboxing video. The link will be here. <laughs> um, it's a very fun video. We got some horror books. We got some metal tees and CDs and all different kinds of things. And uh, yeah, it was very exciting to share that stuff with you. And I'm currently working on metal unboxing number two. So stay tuned for that. We have so much more in store on this channel. So subscribe, like and comment, share this video with your fellow uh, Rom Romstein friends. I'm going to go and like Google Translate and see how, what this pronunciation is. Um, but yeah, let me know stuff about this band. And um, wherever you are, whenever you're watching this, thank you so much. And I will see you soon. Bye, guys.